What's up everybody, my name is Justin and welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Tears. If you're new here, please make sure you hit like and subscribe. I'm really trying to put in a lot of good time and effort and content for 2023. So it really mean a lot for me to see you guys start hitting subscribe on this channel because 95 plus percent of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. But that's neither here nor there because on today's video, because on today's video, we are doing bare knuckle, single barrel cask strength. Okay, so Bare Knuckle is a product from KO Distilling, which is a company in Virginia in the Manassas area, so really not too far from me. I can probably get out to them someday and hopefully maybe even film something there if they'll let me. But anyways, this is the single barrel cast strength edition, so it's coming in at 124 proof, which makes it 62% alcohol. You just look at the bottle. It's got the Bare Knuckle Fighting Lady up front. It's coming in at 47 months. It has here on the back on the age statement, which just is a little bit under four years old. I went online, I checked it out. It is 70% corn, 20% wheat, and 10% malted barley. So interesting. This is the first time I'm ever gonna have anything from KO Distilling or Bare Knuckle. I'm very interested in it today. On the back, it reads, for ages, women like men have battled for family to make a living for rights and just causes. Like the American female fighter from the early 1900s who was on your front label, our front label, some have ventured into the ring to apply their pugilistic, pugilistic skills to fight, win, to advance, and to prevail. For all those women who work hard every day, we salute you. KO Distilling has created Bare Knuckle Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It is a strikingly smooth, handcrafted wheat bourbon sourced from local grains, which are milled, mashed, fermented, and double distilled in small batches, aged in charred new American oak barrels. It's KO's fourth whiskey. We hope women and men alike find it to be a knockout spirit like we do. So, coming in at 47 months, this is barrel number 18-0314, bottle number eight out of that barrel. So, pretty pretty low bottle number out of there. So I've seen bare knuckle around. I've never had it before. So when I saw the single bear cast strength edition today while I was out, I had to buy it. it. Cost me $60. Okay, let's go ahead and do the bottle pop. Ooh, very nice bottle pop there. All right, I like to nose everything out of the bottle first before we get into the pour. Mmm, interesting. Definitely some red fruits in there. Definitely some butterscotch. A little bit of barrel char smokiness. All right, let's go ahead and get into the pour. Okay, so I overall, I like the labeling. I like the bottle. It all looks pretty good to me. It definitely screams craft spirit with that label and everything on there, but I like it. I don't really have any complaints about it. So hopefully, the bourbon inside is going to be good as well. Red fruits hit you strong right up front. A little bit of butterscotch there in the background, some a little bit of leatheriness. A little bit of smoky barrel char. Maybe like an apple spice too, an apple spice. Maybe like a red, a red apple spice. You can definitely smell the influence of the wheat and the malted barley in there. But all of it is, it's honestly a little bit hard for me to pick out exactly what I'm smelling. Like I'm smelling different things, but it's hard for me to distinguish what they are beyond what I've said already. Maybe a little bit of a dried fruit in there too, like a raisin. I think a raisin in there is probably what I'm hiding in the background. Okay, it smells pretty good. Coming in at 124 proof, so that's kind of right in the range of where I love them. Hopefully it's good. Cheers, everybody. You definitely get the red fruits up front. It's not overly oily or anything like that. It doesn't coat the tongue, which generally I really like, but it's also not bitter at all. I'm not getting any bitteriness out of this, which is good. 
I was a little bit worried about that because sometimes when I have the malted barley stuff, scotch, whatever, it tends to get a little bit bitter on me. Drinks very smooth for 124 proof. Drinks very smooth and I think that's part of the non-bitteriness in there. So it goes down very nicely. It leaves a little bit of a lingering in your mouth of like a vanilla-y caramel and that's kind of what's left over and just a tiny hint of barrel char in there. Just a very tiny hint, but up front is pretty much just a quick little blast of those red fruits. Okay, spread it out over my mouth that time. Definitely got more of a tobacco-iness, more of a, a little bit of a, a, a pepperiness in there, tobacco pepperiness. I think that's kind of what has been throwing me off a little bit. On, on this one, this one's definitely been one of the harder ones, I think, for me to do recently. Maybe it's because I'm feeling, filming this back-to-back -back after the last video, which was the Larceny A123. That could have something to do with it. But I think once I spread it out over my tongue, I normally start from front to back. At that time, I kind of spread it out all around at once. Definitely got some uh, tobacco a little bit of pepper. Yeah, you get the red fruits, you get the vanilla, you get the tobacco, you get the pepper. And then as it melts away in your mouth, it goes into the, the caramel vanilla, and that's kind of what's left lingering in your mouth. And that's actually really nice. I like the finish on this one very much. It's like one of those, uh, those candies that are the caramels with the vanilla center in the, in the center, in the center. That's what it finishes like, which I really enjoy. But the upfront part is just a little bit confusing for me. I don't, I don't know if I'm just struggling for whatever reason on this one. It's just a little bit confusing trying to pick it all apart because it comes and goes so quickly. That's, I think that's my main complaint, not really a complaint, but that's my main issue with this one so far, is that those flavors up front come and go extremely fast before it starts getting into that finish. It's good though, I can't complain about it, especially since it's all locally sourced, locally you know, milled, grinded, all that stuff, aged, all that stuff locally, it's not a MGP uh, sourced out thing. They make this all themselves, best I can tell. But uh, for all those reasons, I really like it. It's complex on the nose to the point where I was struggling with it a little bit. I like when things make me think, when I gotta sit there and think, oh, well, what, what was that, what was that? What was that in there? Oh, I can't, what was that? So uh, overall, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's, it's just missing something, it feels like. Maybe it's the oiliness, maybe it's that viscosity that it's, it's missing, it's, it doesn't have that at all. Uh, but it just feels like it's missing one little thing that could take this from good to great. It's good how it is, definitely good at $60 for this bottle, definitely happy to have it, especially coming in with the cash strength at 124 proof. I'm not sure if I had the regular version, maybe what I would get out of this since it's this is the cast strength version, which is generally what I prefer to drink, but I'm not sure what I would get out of regular. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. I can't complain about it at all. The question is, where am I gonna put this thing on the tier system? So, I like the look of the bottle overall. The nose is pretty good. It's got a lot of things that I like about it. It just feels like there's something missing and I can't put my finger quite on it. But I think I'm maybe over over analyzing it a little bit because overall it is very very good bourbon especially for a cast strength really enjoy it it's tasty i'm happy to have it i'm happy to, to drink it i'm gonna i'm gonna drink it and it's definitely a cool one with the imagery on there to have up on the display here on the shelf for when people come over so i think if i'm gonna put it on the tier system i'm gonna go with the b tier it's pretty good it's not supreme quality that I'm gonna save and save and only drink special occasions or anything like that, but it's certainly a very good bourbon. Not bad at all. It doesn't have any bitteriness, which I really, really enjoy because sometimes you can just have one that just got that bit of bitteriness on it that just takes away from the flavors. It doesn't have that at all. Not bitter at all. All the flavors are there. They just come and go very quickly before it gets into that finish. When the finish is good though, so I can't really complain about that. I just wish the initial flavor stayed a little bit longer. So bare knuckle. You're going on the B tier. You're a very good bourbon. I'm definitely gonna be interested in having more from them in the future. And I would love to get up one day and check out the distillery and their tasting room. So, I don't know if you guys have had this before, but if you have, let me know down in the comments below. I feel like this review was maybe 
a little bit all over the place. I don't know. I don't think I nailed this one overall. I might have to come back to this one again in the future. But thank you all for being here. Please make sure you hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.